Verse 9, but avoid. Nothing can stymie you quicker than this. Avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the what? Law. They're all out there waiting for you to debate and argue and waste your time. Phalos, waste your time with their phalos, waste material words, for they are unprofitable and vain, void of content. A man that is an heretic, context tells you he's one that will engage you in foolish questions, myths and fables, everything from Jesus Christ is God to the dead being alive, to the manifestations are no longer necessary, to calling me a counterfeit minister, I'm in it for my own egotistical pride, to every other little myth and fable they want to wrap yourself up in. You know, you just believe God to have a way to escape, that you may bear up against the temptation. Remember 1 Corinthians 10? It comes up in this stuff. So you don't get wrapped up in the spider web of their malarkey. God will give you ways to escape even in this. This verse doesn't just apply to escaping physical harm. Some of the greatest escapes I've ever been provided is being taken out of the way of these gum bumpers, not having to waste a second of my time talking to them. Verse 13, there hath no temptation taken you. And it's a temptation to argue and debate and defend, it is a temptation. But such is his common demand. But God is faithful, who will not allow you, suffer is allow, you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape also. That's the emphasis. Look for that way out. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry, because it's all it leads to if you persist. Even if you give the right answers, it's a waste of time to debate the hard-hearted. Verse 10, a man that is an heretic. Literally, heretic means one who's of a sect, S-E-C-T. He is factious, F-A-C-T-I-O-U-S. I add, in the vernacular, I'd say he's tribal tribal. They have their spiritual tribes and they're denominational. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, and that's the word conf confrontation. Well, I guess that tells you if you want to nail them, first and second. If they're not going to respond, reject. Dr. Rule gave us this literal of reject. Excuse yourself graciously. I think that graciously means more than just being nice. I think it means you're in the grace of God. They haven't talked you out of it. So excuse yourself being a man or a woman of grace. In this literal, he writes, after the first and second confrontation, there it is, have nothing to do with a dissentious person. Remember 1 Corinthians 14, if any man be ignorant, let him be what? Ignorant. One of the texts reads, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignored. There you go. Excuse yourself graciously. Here's another one in Psalm 119 along that same lines that we've read in previous years. I don't know if I've read it recently. But in Psalm 119 in the 13th section, ideally the section of how to deal with traitors and be and betrayal, he says in verse 104, Psalm 119, Through thy precepts I get sunesis, understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. And I've taught you this word hate in the Hebrew means to be cold and indifferent. That's ignore. It's not an activated injurious response against the person because we know we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's to be cold and indifferent to every false way, to just ignore. You turn your back on the heretic. 